Hey guys, welcome to Fearless Cooking. So today we're going to do a skirt steak in a, uh, let's see, what is it called? It's a red chimichurri sauce. Mm -hmm. so, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna get everything ready before we cook the skirt steak. And I've got it just kind of hanging out over here on a sheet tray, okay? And so, like, this was actually flap steak that I got at Costco. But you look at it, it's a skirt steak. Everybody just calls it different stuff. And we're gonna cut it probably in a couple of pieces. It'll, it, we don't wanna crowd the cast iron skillet. And then I've got some more from this that I'll end up doing later on the grill. But what we're gonna do is that we're gonna get everything ready and then we're going. We're gonna use a dry cast iron skillet. We'll put just a little bit of oil on the meat we're going to heat the cast iron skillet till it just starts to smoke, and then that's when we're going to put the meat on. And the, the beauty of <laughs> it's a it's a blessing and a curse. The beauty is you're you're cooking it in a screaming hot skillet. The curse is this place, the Benna Hood, the tear sucks, and it's over there. So I'm going to open the window and turn a fan on to, to try and like help lessen the amount of smoke that builds up in here. Because the other day. I mean, it, it was like LA on a bad day. It was just like smog, fog, smoke everywhere. Good thing the dish was so tasty. Yeah, yeah. So it so that's the that's the blessing piece. Is it tastes fantastic? You're not messing around with it. It's like you literally, you know, do all the prep ahead of time, and six minutes later, the meat's done. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get the fan. Jim, will you turn the fan on? Okay, and I'm gonna open the window. This is kind of a, a poor man's Benna hood. And then I've got, this is two thirds of a cup of um, red wine vinegar. You and wanna name all the ingredients first so everyone yeah, is yeah. fully prepared? So I'm gonna put the red wine vinegar in here just because you know, knowing me, I was gonna knock it over, ah, right? Perfect. Now I'm gonna use some extra virgin olive oil and I'm just gonna put like a, the kind of the scientific method in here. I'm just going to do a, that's about a good glug, maybe a little bit more of a glug. Here we go. All right. It's kind of an oil slick there on the top. Now then, what I'm going to add is I've got a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Just going to dump that in there. And don't worry, I'll, there'll be plenty of time to catch up. Okay. Then we're going to put in a teaspoon of cumin, okay, and this is uh, like ground cumin. I'm not just using whole cumin this time. And then we're gonna do uh, a, a teaspoon of pepper flake. All right, and now then I'm gonna add a big fat pinch of uh, cracked black pepper and also a big fat pinch of salt. That's a yeah. huge pinch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because I'm also, I'm not salting the meat. Ah, okay. Sense. We'll chop this up in a minute. Which, what is that? The, the, I'm sorry, this is curly parsley. Okay. We're just gonna, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all this stuff kind of hanging out in this chimichurri. And then, and that includes the, uh, the, the, the garlic, the shallots, and the bell peppers. And then, once we get all that done, then I will um, get the meat seasoned. Once the meat's cooked, then we slice it up and put it in there so it all, all that flavor mixes together. And the way that, you know, you can serve this, you know, you can serve it on tortillas and turn it into kind of a fajita. You can serve it over um, cauliflower rice or regular rice or kind of whatever turns you on. Um, I'm trying to think, we used it, I mean, man, I ended up putting it in eggs and everything else this last week. So it, it's, it's a, what I love about it is the versatility of the dish. So what I'll do right now, just to, since these are taking up more room, is I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these bell peppers. In. So I cut it in half and then I just grab the, the, the piece up here, the stem and the seed, and just pull that whole piece out and then any of the like kind of big veins that are in there, I get rid of those. Let's do the same thing on this side. And I had already rinsed these off. 
you right. could use any bell peppers, I'm sure, red, yep. yellow. Yeah, because I had said red, and then I realized, hey, I have an orange one there that I need to, to use, so we're just using one of each. And, um, you know, yeah, see, this is what happens too. Sometimes this is like kind of a part of a baby bell pepper or something growing in the middle. Tasty. And then... Probably, could you even use green? Yeah, I, I don't, you could. I don't like green bell peppers. See, it's weird. You just never know what you're going to find growing inside these things. Um, to me, green bell peppers have a different flavor profile to them. All right. More bitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just, I got scarred as a kid because my mom used to make this um, stuffed bell peppers that I just wasn't a fan of. And it was in, in the house where I grew up in, really didn't make any difference if you liked it or not. You were going to eat some of it anyway. And there was just a couple of things that I still kind of have this psychic scarring from. And that happens to be it. So when I eat, it's like I will eat like grilled green bell peppers. I just don't cook with them all the time. Yeah. Okay, all right. What are you doing now? So now what I'm going to do is I want to cut these real thin. Okay. So I'm just, and I'm not going to, I'm going to leave them in, in like the whole strips. Okay. So I'm just going to, let's see, let's do this so you can see. All right. Here we go. Just make it. You know, these are, that's probably a quarter of an inch. So the full length of that. Yeah, the full length. Yeah. And then we'll turn this over. Using the claw approach. Yeah, oh yeah. That's the easiest way to, uh, to get the size that I want. And before I start putting it in here, I'm going to stir that up real good. Just because it's going to be easier to get it stirred well before I have a bunch of other stuff in there. So, just kind of get it where it'll all dissolve. All right. I'll just sit that there for a second. All right. Go ahead and drop this in. So, the bell pepper is in the mm -hmm. box. Yep. And then... Kind of move those out of the way, the seeds. And this is also when you know if your knife's sharp or not, because for some reason, bell peppers can be kind of bulky to cut them if your knife's dull. All right, put this in there. And I don't know if I mentioned it last week or not. Um, you know, obviously, everybody's life is completely different now. I mean, I think, you know, everybody kind of defines things pre-9-11, post-9-11. Well, I think we're going to have lives kind of pre-COVID and post-COVID. And so, like, the way that we shop, I think, is going to be different. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I did this last week is sign us up for a CSA box. That's uh, Community Supported Agriculture. And there's a place in Austin called Johnson's Backyard Garden that we had gotten, we buy their produce a lot of times. They have it at Whole Foods. They have it at, sometimes at Central Market. And then they have a booth set up at the farmer's market. Well, I'm not going to be going to the farmer's market as often. I'll still probably go some. But, you know, it just depends. As this stuff starts to ramp up, I'll probably go a lot less. My, my goal is if, if I can get it to where I'm not out more than once a week max, that's my preference. Um, but anyway, ha having, like, fresh produce show up at the house does a couple of things. One is it lets me help support somebody that's growing food in the community. Okay. The other thing is that it kind of reduces a trip to the grocery store. Plus, it's, it's like 57 people haven't been handling and coughing on that food before I get it. So, so if, if you're in Austin, I would highly recommend, you know, hop, hopping online and, and signing up for Johnson's. If you don't live in the Austin area, I would strongly recommend that you check out 
community supported agriculture in your area and find out which places are doing it. Because it's a great way to uh, you know, support a good cause and get good food in the process. Because I just got through seeing, um, mm -hmm. as of, I think it's tonight or tomorrow, the state of Ohio is saying they're closing bars and restaurants. Oh, wow. Yeah, statewide. And so, you know, it's like, obviously, I've got, well, I don't know that everybody knows it, but my, my son is part owner of a restaurant, and he was a chef at a uh, restaurant in uh, uh, Estes Park. And, you know, I'm, I'm worried about them. But, you know, I also realized that over time, you know, closures like that are going to be, you know, kind of more and more likely. So, you know, if people are like, I don't know how to cook, you know, I think we're, we're all kind of getting a head start on that. Um, in fact, I just saw that David Shane just announced that he's closing all of the uh, Momofuko's in uh, New York. LA, I think DC. I think the only one he's going to have left open is the one that is in um, Las Vegas, and the one I think he's got one in Toronto and someplace else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that's going to start becoming a lot more of the norm, unfortunately. All right, so now then, I've got the, I've got the um, bell pepper in there. I'm going to slice the shallots. And then we will uh, use the garlic press on the garlic. So all I'm going to do with the shallots is just cut them really thin. Not, not a chopping, but no, you're going to have No, no, because I like the whole pieces in there, yeah. but I want it to be super thin. And the other thing is that that vinegar will kind of help mellow out the shallots. Yeah. Almost pickles them. It does. It actually, it does kind of pickle them. So it's one pretty good sized shallot, yeah. Yeah, it's, this was a large yeah. monster shallot, okay. yeah. Yeah, because there's, there's more to come. There we go. Yeah, in fact, we finished the meat and we still had some of the the uh, marinade left, so then we you know use that with, with uh with other meat. Yeah, it's very tasty. Yeah, yeah, it's and the, 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 the paprika that I use, I use smoked paprika, but I use a, so there's this regular paprika, then there's smoked sweet and smoked hot. I use smoked sweet. Because remember you said, what, what makes, what's, why is this so sweet? Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing I can figure is that it was the paprika because, I mean, red wine vinegar is a little bit sweet, mm -hmm. but, yeah, there was no sugar or anything. You know? The peppers, yeah. the red peppers mm -hmm. are a little bit sweeter than... Yeah. Finishing up the shallot. Mm -hmm. okay. And then next week, we're... So one of the things I'm going to try and do with this is to start trying to figure out, okay, what are ingredients that people are more likely to have at home? All right, so I'm gonna use the garlic press. And that's what I'm going to start trying to do with Beryl's cooking. And more like sort of pantry-like items. Uh, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, and like we'll have, you know, I'll also use fresh produce that comes in the CSA box. Um, and then we'll use some frozen produce. I mean, we'll kind of change it up. And if you guys have requests going, Hey, how do you do this sort of stuff? You know, if like if you have ideas that you want me to cover, please please uh, you know send send me an email with that. Okay, so I'm just huh? Yeah, what are you doing? I'm getting ready to put the garlic in, and okay. so I'm just using the press. And this thing, it's got just a little like um, I don't know lever here that just goes down. And it just squeezes it through the bottom. If you don't have a press, you could just also just mince it. Yeah, or if you if, if you could also grate it. Yeah. With a grate or a microplane. And let's see. Since I had already peeled it, I'm not worried about. You can put garlic in without the the peel on it. I mean, you can not peel it and put it in there. I like to peel it first. Yeah. Okay. So now that I'm just gonna stir this up real good. 
get all that garlic mixed around, get everything in there. Make sure that I get those shallots down in the that vinegar. All right, so now I'm just gonna let this hang out. The parsley goes in last. Yeah, I'm gonna put the parsley in last, but I'm gonna go ahead and chop it now. Okay, have it ready. And I already rinsed this off. You know, I think that's one of the things that, you know, if you're buying stuff from the store, you know, and it really, unfortunately, it, it, you're not going to sterilize anything when you get it home. You know, in other words, it, it's like pro produce is not, you know, unless you're, and even if you're putting it in vinegar, it, it's not going to happen. So I think that's the important to like get your stuff sourced the best that you can. All right. Okay, so, so you just chopped it quickly chopped it up. or pretty finely? Yeah, just kind of. A, I, I didn't like it, wasn't laborious, but I went went over it pretty well. All right. So now then, I'm just going to, I'm going to dry this. Dry this off. All right. There we go. And now I'm going to hit this with a paper towel one more time because what you're wanting. <laughs> Is that you want the meat as dry as you can, so that it, when you put it in the in a hot skillet, the heat it, it can either do one or two things. It can start working on a crust on the meat, or it can be evaporating the moisture off the beef. Mm -hmm. So we want to get rid of the moisture, so that we're working on crust okay. and flavor development instead of steaming it. Okay. okay? Now then, I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of olive oil it's not what's left but i'll just put a little bit on here you've not cut the meat yet so no i haven't cut it yet i'm going to rub this all in then i'll cut it so i'm going to rub it on this side i'm going to rub it on the other side yes i will wash my hands here all right And then we'll put just a touch on the other side. Come on. So you're not putting a lot on it. it looks like you're no, I'm trying to get it. Lightly. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Because I, you know, otherwise I was going to get a big glug on there, and I don't want to do that. That's done. And I'm just going to rub that in. Now I'm going to wash my hands one more time and then I'm going to cut this into like thirds. Okay. And then we will start the uh, heating process on the skillet. So you're going to cook the meat first before you add the sauce or how will that? Yeah, yeah. So once the meat gets cooked, then I put it in there. Oh, in okay. the bowl yeah. with the sauce. Mm -hmm. You never poured the sauce no, into the no, pan. No. Okay. I mean, you can once you're serving it, but yeah. so I'm just going to cut it here real easily so I don't destroy the edge on my knife. And, you know, if your knife is sharp, it doesn't take much to cut this. All right. So I don't like leaving a knife dirty. And I, one thing that I just refuse to do is ever leave a knife in the sink. That's just like begging for a trip to the ER, and I want to stay the hell out of hospitals. Yeah, that's right. a good idea. Yeah. All right, so this is all over here. Let me get these things out of the way. I want to keep this area as clean as possible. All right, we'll move this out of the way. All right, so this bad boy going. Okay. And the other day I was kind of testing, I've got a, this infrared thermometer that'll tell surface temperatures. And I was trying to see kind of how hot I got the, the skillet. It got up to almost 400 degrees. And I noticed how hot the handle was. So I just hit that, um, the, the beam on the handle, the, the handle of one of these things over, a, if you've got the skillet over a half length, this thing was like 
think 230, 240 degrees, which is why you don't want to grab the, you know, the skip. The Having that towel close by me. Oh, it, it's yeah. critical because otherwise, I mean, you're going to end up leaving a blister on your hand, yeah. you know. Yeah. Really tight. Yeah. Right. How, so we're just going to kind of let this thing go for a minute. Um, and then how long will you be cooking the meat? When you it's three cook? minutes aside. Wow. And so what you, quick. yeah, it's really quick. So what you do is that you're going to put that in there and you're just going to put it in, set your timer for three minutes and leave it the hell alone. Don't touch it. Don't move it. Just leave it alone. And that's how, and then you turn it on the other side, three minutes, you're done. So it's, that's yeah. Quick and easy. Yeah. yeah. And I, this easy. one piece is thinner than this piece. So this one will probably get, cook a little bit faster. I may pull this one out just a touch early. Yeah. But are you going to use a thermometer on them? No, 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 because that's one thing it's is so the, this stuff is so thin yeah. that, yeah, it, it's just, you know, you're, you're just, you're hitting it in there and you could probably even do it a touch less. Um, we'll, we'll see if I, you know, get a sense that this stuff is just, you know, like over, overdoing, then I'll back it off. Once we get this in there, I'll tell you about next week. It's what I want to wait is, yeah, it's just starting to smoke a little bit right now. So, okay. yeah, so we're going to go in with this. So put the thicker piece in first. Yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely get smoky. All right, I'm going to put that one there and then this one here. Okay, you set the timer for three yeah, minutes. Three minutes. All right. Let me get this out of the way. Go ahead and wash it off. Wow. Oh, it smells heavenly. Oh, it's already. Yeah, it's, you know, and it, it and all it is is just meat, but it's like, yeah. it's, um, uh, yeah, you know, I guess that just kind of sucks if I break meat smells when I'm cooking. <laughs> and that, you know, the cat burn still is it, fairly well seasoned. Yeah, that's a good thing. All right, so next week, the first week of our kind of uh, pantry phase fearless cooking, we're going to cook something I've never cooked before. And guess what? I will not have cooked it prior to next Sunday. So this is going to be an experiment for both of us. You're also being a bit fearless. I am. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to put spaghetti puttanesca. And puttanesca is, it, 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 the literal translation is the way of the prostitute. I got this from uh, fearless cooking, or fearless cooking, from Serious Eat. And, and what they were saying is that this was how the prostitutes like lured people to their houses of ill repute was the smell of this dish this brought people heading that way. And, you know, I'm sure there was a lot of embellishment with that. But but what we're going to do is we're going to use anchovies, we're going to use tuna, we're going to use capers, um, garlic. Uh, olives and I think tomatoes are in it. I'll, I'll have all the ingredients and the, the, the photo that you'll see will be all this stuff laid out on the cutting board and I'll update the recipe afterwards with, with the new picture. So, and spaghetti, obviously. And spaghetti. And I'm going to use a, I think I have some quinoa spaghetti, yeah. but you can use whatever kind of spaghetti you want. So things that could stay in your pantry for a week, it's it's obviously this is great. I have always used anchovies to like flavor sauces with. And I've, I have put them on salads before and I like them. As a kid, I hated anchovies. But you know, as a kid, a lot of times you don't like things that taste interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so we're at like 28 yeah. seconds. seconds. Yeah. Before, yeah. So yeah. my, I'll use my tongs to turn it over in that amount of time. And yeah, we got a pretty good smoke going on. Yeah. You know, hopefully the uh, fan is blowing some of it out the window and probably some of it upstairs. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah. It's the price you have to pay for That's it. That's it. It's fearless, baby. It's That's fearless. Right. All, right. All right. So turn okay. that over. If you'll set it again. I will. All right. We set it another few minutes. Yeah. And see, you can see it's nice and brown. Oh, yeah. I think that nice. Yeah. And then. Once 
once it once that three minutes is up, we're just going to set it on this tray here, and we'll let it rest for just a second, and then we'll um, cut it up and put it in there. So you should know that one of our participants put in the chat that that's his favorite sauce. Oh yeah. Yeah. So nice. That's great. Thank you for doing it too. Yeah, it's uh, you know, one of the things that I'm going to spend the next well, so the next couple of months, I'm going to work on finishing my NAS film, which is a personal training certification. Uh, and I'm going to try and work to write more and also to do some research for fearless cooking for, for like recipes that people can use based on stuff they're going to have at home. I'm also going to be working on some like basic kind of body weight exercise stuff that people can do. And I'll have that like posted to It'll be some on social media, some of it I'll put on a balancedshoe.com uh, website. But I just want so to have to go to the gym. Yeah, well, because I think right now the best thing to do is stay the hell out of the gym. And I hate yeah. saying that, but I just think that what we've got to do is get this curve flat, right? And that just means we got to keep people out of the hospital. So we also got another question that just given this kind of the what's going on right now. This uh -huh. and ask for any tips for not mindlessly eating, other than eating more protein and or hand cuffing myself? What yeah, so, yeah so I think the protein, I that right there, I think is the biggest success lever with diet, right? And, and when I'm saying diets, I don't mean like a diet of deprivation. I mean like just a way of feeding yourself, right? Because when people are always hungry two or three hours after a meal, what it's telling me is either they're doing nervous eating or they didn't eat a meal that was like satisfying enough or satiating enough to keep them, you know, full until their next meal. So, you know, and the other thing I would say is that any snacking that you do, make sure that it's a kind of a protein-based snack. So this person's eating out of boredom. Yeah, and, yeah, I, and, and so with the thing with the boredom, then what I would say is, that's the great way to do the body weight exercises. If you're inclined to go eat something out of boredom, go do 20 air squats instead. Oh, there you go. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is like yeah, 15. 12 seconds. All right. Away. And so we're getting ready to pull this and put here on the sheet tray. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. I know we are. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to. Yeah, I know. So we're going to get rid of the meat incense. Thank you. All right, and now then I'm going to move this out of the way, put it over here. All right. And yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of like, man, we just need some jazz music playing in the background, and, you know, it's like, a, a martini in front of us because it there definitely feels like you're at a smoky bar. Yeah. All right. Now what are you doing? But I'm going to let this hang out for about a minute. Okay. Like, you know, because I, it, it, I, it, I should let it sit longer, but I'm probably not going to because I'm going to pour all the juices from there into that as well because it's all it's cooked. You're going to put oh the juices from the meat yeah, into yeah, the it, into the mm -hmm. sauce. Okay. But it, like this is not um, like releasing a lot of liquid right now. Yeah, so. and then what, what about the parsley? When does that? Once I get the, the meat top? in there, then I'll just kind of top it with okay. the parsley. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, I think what we've got to get, here's a couple of things that, because I've, within the primal health community, there's been, you know, quite a bit of, of talk about how do we best support each other. And I think number one is, you know, make sure that you know kind of how folks are doing around you, yeah. right? Because, you know, there's going to be folks that this has them completely freaked out. And yeah. sometimes just kind of a word of reassurance or just letting, uh, you know, folks know that there's people thinking about and, and caring about them is important. Yeah. The other thing is, I the other day when I went to Costco, the I was talking to one of the managers here as I was checking out. She goes, I asked her how she was doing. And she goes, man, it has been insane. A woman, like, first thing in the morning, sprinting down the aisle with her basket to try to get toilet paper, which they're already out of, literally runs into this woman. 
And I said, you know, these sorts of times kind of bring out either the best in people, bring out kind of highlight people's humanity, or it turns folks into nuts. Yeah. And so I think it's like, it's kind of that, that being that point of reassurance to people to let people know it's going to be okay. Yeah. You know? And, and I think fill your time as well too. To, yeah. Absolutely. And I also think that this is one of those times where how you eat, how you sleep, how you, you know, find some way to work exercise into mm -hmm. your, into your uh, schedule is going to be pay big dividends. Yeah. I cringe when I see the stuff on social media where people are kind of using this as a way to like flog some kind of a supplement that they're selling going, well, hey, this will keep it all away. That's all BS, mm -hmm. right? But I think there's things that we can do to enhance our immune system. Right. And eating whole food is a great place to start. Uh, getting out and getting some sunshine is another one. So, all right, so what we're going to do with this is that, you're going to cut it into pieces first. Yeah, and I actually, you know what? Rather than do that, I think I, I think I'm going to let it hang out here for a few more minutes, okay. just because I would prefer not to like, you know, cut why it before you, it's resting. You need to let meat rest before you cut it. Because what happens is that when the temperature changes, it squeezes like liquid out out of the bet between the muscle fibers because mm -hmm. okay? the the protein contracts. What you're doing is letting the meat come back to a little more normal temperature, and that relaxes a little bit and pulls some of that stuff back in. Um, okay, so, so get it dry. yeah, so you don't want to cut it while it's still in that kind of that like coil state. You want it to let it unwind just a little yeah, bit. Okay. At least that sounds great. I've read that before, and I'm pretty sure that's uh, right. I'll believe you know? it. That sounds yeah. Like yeah. Um, you know. If you're when you sue these stuff, you don't have to worry about that as much because it takes so long for, for it to come up to town. Mm -hmm. And we'll be doing some kind of sous vide stuff with uh, those will be ones obviously that I'll record. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I we we froze a bunch of stuff, so we'll be you know doing some stews and stuff with things that are frozen. But I'm like I said, I also want to try and see okay, what can we do with like frozen vegetables as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be doing a lot of stuff with like ground beef um, and like I want to see kind of how creative we can get with like canned fish because we've got a little of that. We do have a bunch of that. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah it is. I, you know, I'm going to also try and see like how to like prepare frozen fish in a way that I really like it because so far I haven't found that way yet, but you know, and the other thing I'm going to, this is going to be the, the impetus for me to figure out something with liver. Cause I just saw a thing earlier today. There's some new research that's coming out of some of the work that was done in China. And it looks like that heme iron may be real important to our ability to kind of battle this stuff. Hmm. And so, you know, if, and like they're saying, it's all kind of preliminary at this point. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, it's like I've been like looking for an excuse to figure out the whole liver conundrum anyway. So okay. I guess this is as good a reason as go. any. Yep. All, all right. right. So I'm just what I'm going to do. The the grain on this runs this way. So you cut it across the grain. Okay. It's like about one inch. No, it's probably more like about a half an inch. Half an inch. Okay. Yeah. And you know you can cut it whatever whatever thickness you want, mm -hmm. and you know in the name of um, all things holy and science, I'm gonna. Oh yeah. Make sure it's good. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I hate to put bad meat in there. Absolutely. And then, hmm, here we go. Had to find the grain. I mean that's probably. You know, half an inch, okay. and that piece is an inch. But we put it in there, and then last piece. Okay. What do you think you're gonna serve with this? What is what so? We'll have with this. But I, I know we have some kale in the fridge, so 
I'll roast some kale, and then I think I might just do like sweet potatoes with it. Or actually, what sounds good to you? Well, you talked about doing some uh, puree. Some oh, that's right. Celery so, root or parts of puree. So I'm always like ripping Ethan off whenever he cooks something at the restaurant going, hey, that looks good. So the other day he did a celery root with parsnip puree. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do that. Kind of like I, a mashed potato feel mm -hmm, to it. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be so good with that. Excuse me, because I got, um, the other day I got these big parsnips. I already have a, a, a celery root, so that should be perfect. So Those I'll, are also vegetables that stay in the fridge for quite a while. They last. Well, except you and I like them so much, they don't last yeah, very long. But I mean, just saying, oh, you're right, you before can, you, yeah. You can stock up on them mm -hmm. in your fridge. So, All right. let me put this in here and then I'll is, uh, show you guys healthy. the finished product. I mean, the stuff this looks gorgeous. It's beautiful, yeah. Very, it's actually almost special looking. Well, yeah. So, that's what we have today. Beautiful. So, next week, spaghetti pudinesca. And then, like I said, I'll start working on that. If you guys have some ideas about stuff you'd like to see us do, well, I would certainly welcome all of those recommendations. And uh, guys, ha have a great week. Please stay safe and uh, take good care of each other. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.